Cobra 295, the reason we're working on this aircraft is this is the 50th Cobra ever manufactured. It did serve in Vietnam. It was shot down a couple of times over there. Um, what we're doing to honor the, the original Cobra is to go back and put the original curved style canopy on it, the, the Geno's turret and the uh, interior so it would be representative of what the birds look like in Vietnam. Um, of course, like everything else, it takes time and money. Our biggest issues right now have been a little bit of both. Uh, getting the metal work redone is surprisingly uh, not as simple as you would think uh, to, to change the, the flat panels that the Army went with in the late 70s, early 80s, back to the rounded canopy early on. Their reason for doing that was the, the thinking was that the flat panels actually uh, put less glare uh, out to somebody on the ground and made it a little bit harder for the aircraft to be seen. Um, the rounded canopy, the thinking was that the, you might get a glint, but it was just one spot. It wouldn't, wouldn't uh, glint quite as much as, it, as the flat panels would. Uh, the Marines don't agree with that. The Marines still fly around canopy. It's a completely different rotor system and different uh, engine. It's actually two engines instead of one. Um, but that's the method that they use. Hopefully we'll have this bird back, in, back flying in the next oh, 18 months or so before the end of the 50th anniversary of the ending of uh, the Vietnam War. But uh, the intent is for this aircraft to be back flyable and be in our um, ride program at some point. So we'll be able to give people the experience of what it looked like in the when they first came to came to the conflict back in 66, 67. Steve. So one of the crew chiefs of this bird in Vietnam brought us this red nose. In fact, we have it sitting over on a shelf over here. So once the aircraft is restored, that'll go back on it. So they're trying to restore it as best we can. So this would have been uh, the not really nose art, but the art that's up on the uh, cowling around the uh, where the main rotor is up top, so this would have been the unit that this that this particular bird, one of the units that this particular bird served in in Vietnam. So this is the targeting yoke for the uh, uh, gunner for the G, mo the G model configuration for the Cobra. And then down below here is actual, the actual turret. We've got, uh, one side's already got the 762 a gun in place, the other side will carry a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. Um, and that is, again, what they carried in Vietnam for the most part. You know, some local variations in there, but that generally that was the general configuration. So the big difference between the original Cobra, the G model, um, and the fully modernized or the F model is the shape of the canopy. <clears throat> it's a much smoother, it's a much more rounded canopy in the original version. Uh, it's got some really different, uh, in addition to the canopy being different, the sighting system was really different. Uh, the later versions actually have a turret under the nose that the gunner who sits in the front seat can control right and left, up and down and whatnot to uh, <clears throat> sight in the tow missiles and whatnot. Uh, there's a similar system to drive the turret that's on uh, the original Cobra, except that uh, you, don't have the, you don't have the same level of sighting that you do in the later models. And it's got a different drive in the in the later model uh, Cobras, the turret's actually driven off of um, uh, some sensors that are hard mounted into the roof of the can roof of the canopy. They actually attached to the back of the pilot's helmet. Um, here, they drove the drove it with some hand controls, and they had different things. The current turret, uh, the the latest version of the turret, has got a 20 millimeter three barrel gun Gatling gun uh, arrangement, whereas in this original version, it typically had uh, two ports, one of which had a 7.62 uh, six barrel uh, minigun on one side and a 40 millimeter uh, grenade launcher on the other side. So the armament has definitely changed over the years. Um, original Cobras had a provision for the same three barrel 20 millimeter Gatling gun, but they typically were hard mounted on one of the wing stores, actually typically on the left hand side. Uh, in a, in a, a barrel of ammunition on the other side and it would feed actually through the through the belly of the aircraft to <clears throat> feed the rounds to the other side. All right, so this is arguably the most important piece 
of a Bell helicopter. This is what is called the Jesus nut. This is what goes on top of the, the rotor mast and what is what holds the main rotor system on the top of the helicopter. The joke has always been, you know, if this fails, you're about to go meet Jesus. People are always looking for those. If you go to our website, you can uh, find a Project 295 donation spot uh, that'll allow uh, folks to make a donation to the project to help get this one uh, across the finish line and back in the air. Hopefully we're going to get that done before the end of the 50th uh, anniversary of the ending of uh, Vietnam. Is that when you hope to have this first flight? That's, that's what we're hoping. Sooner than that if we can do it. <laughs> This is a definite Vietnam vet. And it uh, deserves to be back in the air. What percentage would you say is complete? Oh, we're probably at the maybe 70% range. Okay. Uh, the nose is, is still the biggest, um, biggest change that we're working on. We've got to get the, uh, we got some folks coming in pretty soon to finish up getting the uh, the canopy kind of secured. It's basically just sitting in place with a couple of Calicos right now uh, to get it all squared up and in place. And then we'll have to do some fitting on the, the nose to put the old style nose back on. And then it's a matter of getting the guts. So we still have to uh, get the, the engine finished. It's, it's at a shop right now. Get the engine finished, get the main blades finished, um, and then start start the long slog of going through all the hydraulic system and all the electrical system and, and uh, to get everything back up to, to, airworthiness, uh, to airworthy status. It's all doable. It just takes, like everything else, time and money. And where can people go donate again? <laughs> they can go to armyav.org, which is our website, and look for Project 295, and you'll find it there. There's also a, a, we, a Huey that's being rebuilt out in uh, Mesa, Arizona, Project 315. That, one's, that one should be actually flying before this one is probably. But this is the one that's the uh, major, major work on this one.